Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want him to have his way.
to be in revival that's it a little bit more noise for revival come on come on come on come on things are about to shift for the rest of your year starting tonight if you believe it just look at somebody across the row and say things are shifting for us tonight oh that 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 neighbor ain't believe it they don't need nothing to shift look across the church and somebody else and say neighbor things are shifting for us tonight that if you believe it, shout glory. There we go. All right. All right. We are glad. We are glad to have you here tonight. Come on. Clap your hands one more time for Jesus. Can we honor our leaders on tonight? Pastor Scott and Lady Scott. Amen. And while you're clapping for our guest revivalist for the next two nights, Pastor Johnny Brown. Yes, yes, yes. We are in for a treat. We know we are indeed in for a treat. Listen, guys. You know, we do the welcome, so I want you to stand back up for me and make as much noise as you can as First Lady comes and does our welcome address tonight. Amen. We just want to welcome everybody to the Way Church. Y'all sound excited. Come on, see, keep the excitement going. Amen. Welcome you to the first night of revival. Right here, we ask that you greet your neighbor, love on somebody, and hug on somebody in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Do 
Y'all have anybody who believes anything can happen? How much do, how much do y'all believe it? I, I don't know. Y'all got y'all gonna have to make a believer out of me. I, I, I got one. I got one. She up by herself. How many more believers do I have that anything can happen on tonight? I don't know what your hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on I don't know what your anything is. I don't know what your anything is, but if you give me 10 seconds of praise for your anything, I promise you God to do it. If it's health, he's going to do it. If it's finances, he's going to do it. If it's another family member, he's going to do it. If it's a court case, he's going to do it. If it's rent, if it's life, if it's your car payment, he's going to do it. Just like he said he would. Just throw that around the church. Just not on your rope, but throw it around the church. He's going to do it. 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 Or say it until it jumps in your soul. He's going to do it. Yes, sir. One more time. Look at somebody else who might not have it just, for, just yet. And say he's going to do it. He's going to do it. You will not leave here after tomorrow with the same testimony. He's going to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I was just making sure y'all felt revival like I felt revival. I've been waiting. I've been waiting on this moment. I, I've been waiting on this moment. I am sure, I am sure that God won't lie. We didn't make it this far for him to leave us. We didn't make it this far for him to leave us. Every battle hasn't been easy. But he's been keeping me. Pastor says it all the time. He's been right there. That's it. He's been right there. One more time. He's been right there. All right, we got it. We got it. Really just making sure Pastor Brown is not going to have to work too hard when he comes. Amen. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. Y'all going to throw a glory up real me? One, two, three. Glory. You. Clap your hands as we receive our pastor for our offering on, at this time. Right there by my side, right there. 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 Right there.
open up your mouth and give him the best praise. We get ready to move, but I said, give him the best praise. If the Lord is good to you, if the Lord is worthy, I didn't ask you how you felt tonight. I asked you if he was worthy. The most shataya. I said if he was worthy. Hallelujah. Not about how I feel. It's not about what I'm going through. It's the, the great God. He's worthy of all of my praise. As I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I got a testimony. I got a, yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to have testimony, sir. I got a testimony. Oh, praise his holy name. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I came to tell him thank you tonight. Hallelujah. I came to hear come on, I come to tell him thank you tonight. Oh, praise the Lord. Listen, listen. Let, 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 me, let me school you in on something. We're going to be fine tonight. As long as it takes for you to get in the groove of praise, that's how long it's going to take for God to locate you where you are. You hear what I said? You know why, praise the Lord? He's not attracted to murmuring. He's not attracted to tears and complaining. But he inhabits the praises of his people. And so if, if you need him to come see about you, open your mouth and tell him thank you. If you need God to turn something around, shake a leg, lift your hands, make some... I know, I know, I know somebody said don't take all of that. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, if you give him the right kind of praise... I don't care what kind of wall is standing in front of you. The right kind of praise will bring your wall down. Come on, somebody. The right kind of praise will move your situation. The right kind of praise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel good tonight. I feel good tonight. I feel like something good is about to happen. I feel like so hey I yeah uh, I feel like something good is about to happen tonight. I don't think we came out here just to show up. I don't think we're having a service just to have I believe God is about to show up for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're, we're getting ready to get your money in just a moment, praise the Lord. We're getting ready to get your money, praise the Lord. But, but before you give him, before you offer him anything monetary, why don't you offer him yourself right quick? Come on, won't you just offer him yourself, yourself. Just give him yourself, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, put your heart in the thing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you tonight. I love, hey, I love you tonight. I love you tonight. I glorify, yes, Lord. Receive our worship tonight. Receive our praise tonight. In the name of Jesus, have thine own way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We honor the Lord for all of you, God's people. Praise the Lord for he is our captain and our soon coming king. He is Alpha and Omega. Come on. The beginning and the end. Praise the Lord. We certainly honor the Lord for all of our visiting friends and family tonight. Glory to God. I do believe, amen, praise the Lord, that I see, amen, some of our friends, praise the Lord, all the way from First Baptist of, what is it? Stedman, praise the Lord. Is that right? Stedman, praise the Lord. I think I got that right. I could be wrong, but you look like them, praise the Lord. She said, that ain't me, praise the Lord. I tell you what, you sure look like them, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She said, you ought to know who I am by now. Praise the Well, we honor the Lord for you being here tonight in the name of the Lord. We certainly honor the Lord for all of our visiting friends and family that are present in the house of the Lord. And you know, when folk come to see you, you're supposed to smile at them and show whatever teeth you got left. 
because folk don't have to be nice to you. Come on, say amen. Praise the Lord. All of the churches, all up and down the region, praise the Lord. They could stop anywhere, but they came out to be with us in revival tonight. And so we're happy for that, praise the Lord. We honor all of our ministerial staff that are present, praise the Lord. Come on. We honor all of our deacons, praise the Lord. Amen, Zion. Praise the Lord. Certainly our guest speaker on tonight, praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Don't y'all be stingy with your praise now. Glory to God. And certainly, last but not least, we honor our first lady. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise our God. Amen. It's a wonderful opportunity to be in the house of prayer. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Listen, praise the Lord. This is the first night of revival. Amen. And so we want to, praise the Lord, be a blessing to this particular service on this week. Amen. So we come to dance. We come to shout. We come to hear the word of the Lord. We come to be revived, and we've also come to present a gift unto the Lord. Amen? Praise the Lord. So I know you all are going to help me, amen, bless this meeting on this week. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, there are different ways to be able to participate in our giving. You can do it by our cash app, which is dollar sign TWCI1. Amen. You can give that way. Praise the Lord. And pre-adventure, you want to uh, use your debit card or your credit card. We do have card capabilities. Sister Whitehurst, raise your hand. Praise the Lord. And as I always say, uh, we have gotten an upgrade now, so you don't have to sit there and wait for the thing to swing. When you hit it, you can tap it. You just tap, and the thing goes ding, and you get your little receipt on your email, praise the Lord, or your text you, glory to God. So, you know, we, we moving on up in the world. So if you want to give by the way of cards, you can do that. And, amen, if you are writing checks, please make them payable to the way church. Is that right? Praise the Lord. And then, of course, cash is always king. Will you please stand with me tonight with a $20 gift? Praise the Lord. As many of you can that will give that. Praise the Lord. And if the Lord told you to give more, amen, will you obey the Lord? Praise the Lord. You obey God. But everybody stand with something in your hand in the name of the Lord. I need my phone. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody standing with something tonight. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm just so excited I can't hardly take it because I believe that the Lord is about to do something mighty in the midst. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Once you get your offering in your hand, if you'll put it in your right hand, because we believe in giving God what's right and not what's left. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Praise the Lord. Even if you don't have anything, I want you to give yourself to the Lord. Amen. Because God going to bless you to be able to give the next time. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity to yet participate in giving. You said it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And so tonight, oh God, we give tonight not out of compulsion. We don't give glory to God to be seen, but we're giving because we're thankful. And we're grateful to your goodness and to what you have done. And now, Father, Lord God, bless this gift that we're about to give. And as it leaves our hands, never let it leave our life. Let it go out. My God, be fruitful and multiply. Subdue and have dominion. Do it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Our hospitality team is going to lead you out. Even if you're given electronically. If you will march with us if you're able. Praise the Lord just so that no one has to step over you. and We can move it expeditiously in Jesus' name. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Glory to God. We certainly thank you for your liberality and giving praise the Lord. And amen. We are coming to, amen, what I consider one of the greatest portions of the service, amen, which is the word of God. I don't know about you, but I've got to have the word of God. Come on, somebody. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth away. But the word of our God abides forever. Praise the Lord. In the word of God, I've got a hiding place. My former pastor used to say, people say, when the Lord come back, I want to be in the heavens and I want to be in the church. He said, if I can just be found in the word of God, amen, everything will be all right. And so tonight, praise the Lord. Amen. They, they, have, they do have a wonderful uh, biography prepared for this man of God. But, he, you know, he doesn't been with us so much. Is that all right, praise God? This is, this is family. This is, this is home, have come home tonight. Is that all right, praise the Lord? But, amen, I would say, amen, that we are so excited. We are honored tonight to have the man of God who, praise the Lord, travels extensively all abroad in the breadth and the width of this United States of America declaring the word of the living God. He is the pastor of the Genesis Church located in Gastonia, North Carolina. Amen, somebody. He is the husband, praise the Lord, of pastor, co-pastor Rachel Brown, praise the Lord. Uh, she gonna get me. I think I gave her a title, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. He is a mighty man of God in his own right able to preach the word of God, teach the word of God, have been dubbed the closer because he can preach and will preach. Will you stand with me tonight as we honor our pastor who will be our pastor for the next two nights? And Whatever he says, that's what we're going to do. Praise the Lord. We honor tonight the ministry gift of Pastor John D. Brown. Can we give God praise for the man of God? Can we give the Lord a great hand of praise tonight? Come on, let's give him better praise than that. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and with the fruit of your lips. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, for about 20 more seconds. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, praise and praise. Come on, he's a mighty God. He's an awesome Savior. Come on, he is a wonder in our very soul. Come on, let him know how much you love him. Let him know how wonderful you believe he is. Hallelujah. Because we've got a little on Christ the Son. Run. Come on, if you know it, say it. All about the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Come on, find somebody else and pull it out of your spirit. Tell them, on Christ the solid. Tell them, tell them, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Pick your foot up and put it down and tell your neighbor I'm standing on a solid rock. Tell him I'm not going to go under. I'm not going to sink. Tell him I'm not going to drown. He's sinking sand. Oh, all of the ground. Oh, yeah. He's 
I'm gonna pick up your foot one more time, make the devil mad. Tell your neighbor I'm standing on a solid rock. Tell him I'm gonna be alright. I'm gonna be just fine. All of the ground, all of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Thank God that we're standing on a rock. Let's pray. I'll see I. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for this privilege that you have granted us to be in your house and in your presence. Thank you that you have summoned us for revival. You called this revival. And so because you called this revival, we expect you to do the miraculous. We're not here to waste time, but there are other things that your people could be doing. But Father, in the name of Jesus, since we are here under the canopy of your presence and your anointing, we ask that you would cause every moment to count. Let us not waste a moment. Speak tonight. Move tonight. Minister tonight. Destroy yokes tonight. Remove burdens and loose chains. Give us something in your house that we can carry back to our house that will invoke and provoke transformation in the atmosphere of our homes. Abashiata. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. And as always, Father, I yield my members to you. I surrender my will. As always, my will I give to you. I will do what you say do. Please use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say that my storage is emptied and I am available unto you. It's in the matchless, mighty, marvelous, and majestic name. Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. If you believe God and agree with that prayer, clap your hands and give him glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Before you take your seats, I want us to give honor and deference to the awesome leaders of this amazing body of believers. Let's thank the Lord for overseer Marcus. Stop. Praise God. Let's thank the Lord for his lovely wife. Let's thank the Lord for Lady Scott tonight. Let's praise him for the entire family, all of my nieces and nephews. To your associate uh, pastors and elders and ministers, thank God for our worship leader tonight. Amen. Thank God for it. My lovely wife in her absence tonight. Lady Rachel Brown, she could not make it tonight. But we're going to try to figure out a way she can get here tomorrow night. Y'all pray, all right? Amen. And uh, to the precious saints of God, thank God for the musicians that's here. Laying out of the depth of their soul. Thank God for those that came with us. Thank God for Elder Johnson, our organist. Thank God for yeah. Minister DK. Yeah. You surprised yeah. us tonight. Praise the Lord. And um, I'm grateful for this revival. Tell somebody this word of declaration and, and uh, we'll go straight into the word of God. Just tell somebody I'm on the comeback. Come on, tell somebody else. I feel myself bouncing back. I feel it. Hallelujah. The devil thought he had me. But mother, I feel myself. Grab your Bibles. 
feel about it, but it feels good to know that you're getting ready to recover all. I said it feels good to know that any day now, everything that I missed, everything that passed me by, everything that I should have had but don't have, every place that I should be and am not, God's getting ready to cause me to bounce back. Shout it down your row and say, bounce back. This is the, this is the bounce back row. That's what I heard him say to me. While pastor was up exhorting, he said, let the people know that they're getting ready to bounce back. This is their comeback season. Yes! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Look somebody right in their eyes, if you don't mind, we're not going to hold you long, but look somebody right in their eyes and just tell them, I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. Tell somebody, I'll take back what the devil stole from me. Look at them and tell them, I rejoice today. Now tell them why, tell them why, because I shall recover it all. Come on, come on, come on. And I rejoice today. Come on, y'all not rejoice. And I rejoice today. Can I get five witnesses that can just wave your hand and say, and I rejoice. Today, tell your neighbor, for I shall recover it all. And I rejoice today. Y'all said it's revival, ain't that right? And I rejoice. Today, all right, I feel something stirring faster. Look on the other side of the church and tell somebody on the other side, and I rejoice today. Tell them for I shall recover. I'll recover it all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For I shall. Recovered all. Yeah, for I shall. Recovered all. to grab a hold of that in your spirit. I need you to grab a hold of that in your spirit. You gonna recover it all. Hey. Oh, my, 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 my. Tell your neighbor he's here and tell him he didn't come empty handed. Tell your neighbor he came with all of my stuff. He came with all of my stuff. 
Because I already got the victory. I'm going to rejoice today because I already got the job, the promotion. Right, 
church. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles tonight. I'm gonna. Peace and strength. Ay, ay, ay. He'll hold you up. I said he'll hold you up. I said he will hold you up. He was able to keep you from falling. He'll hold you up in your weakest time, in your lowest time, in your weakest hour. God will hold you up. Oh, I'm a witness. I am a witness. I'm a hallelujah witness. I said, I'm a hallelujah witness. He will hold you up. Hallelujah with us. He will. of the church in thy Thyatira right these things saith the son of God who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass 
verse 19 I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first notwithstanding I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce many servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not you may be seated brothers and sisters the word of the Lord is blessed I'm going to put myself on a uh, timer tonight uh, lest I go too long I, I want to entitle this particular message tonight one word and that one word is tolerated 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 I'm going to in introduction deal with godly confrontation versus carnal confrontation we'll examine the context of revelation period and then we will deal with the text in which we've read and we'll find three things Firstly, the compliment. Secondly, the correction. And thirdly, the clarity. Let the church say compliment. compliment. Let the church say correction. correction. Thank you. And let the church say clarity. clarity. Amen. Look at someone and remind them the topic. Say tolerated. tolerated. Clap your hands like you believe God's going to speak to you. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, in the last few minutes that I have remaining on this Thursday school night, which is fine because revival is revival, I want to share with you from a prophetic lens what the Lord, I believe, has been speaking to me in this season concerning my life and not only my life but also the lives of many people in ministry and those that are in leadership that's in a shift let the church say shift I, I pray to God that we feel the shift that if you have any prophetic inkling if you are in tune with God and connected to leadership, I believe that you feel that there is a shift coming. We are on the brink of something great. We are on the brink of a sharp turn. And when we turn that corner, we're turning into something that is great. But you got to survive the turn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't get weary or exhausted in the turn. Don't get fatigued in the turn. This is not the time to lose faith, to backpedal, to be over analytical, to question. This is the time to flow with what God is saying. And as we are shifting into greater, the requirement of discernment has intensified. 
you must be able to discern through proper lenses. Because some of the things that we have considered and classified as discernment has really been our own personal bias. And so we'll say, oh, I'm discerning this and this person just, this, this something ain't right, just got a spirit and really it's just your personal bias. You just don't like women in pants, stop. It ain't a demon. You just don't like men that wear certain colors or whatever the case is. It's just, it's been embedded in your subconscious that if that's, if it's not presented in a particular way, then it's not God. But brothers and sisters, God has a way of sending things through other means and through vessels that you necessarily in your flesh would not naturally be inclined to. But this blessing, God says, is coming another way. John chapter 5 tells us that there are people that's standing uh, and waiting beside a pool called Bethesda. It has five porches. Beth house, Bethesda uh, is mercy, uh, the house of mercy. And there are many people that are paralyzed and impotent and they're lame. And everybody is waiting on the moving or the troubling of the water because the Bible says, in John chapter 5 that at a particular season they were uh, waiting because they knew the angel would come down and trouble the water and then who would ever be the first person to step in the water would get their miracle. You see what happens is uh, you have people that get accustomed to a particular way of God's movement. Though it is miraculous and there are miracles that are taking place and though it is supernatural in all of its intent, you can get accustomed to it and you will sit there and familiarize yourself with something that still should be viewed and revered as special. And so God says, I got to shake that up because though it is miraculous, it has still become common. And one thing about God is he is uh, several things, but one of which is he is not common. He is holy. And uh, holy is not being viewed as common. Well, ask your neighbor, what is holy? Tell them the opposite of common. It is God says, I want us to get to the place where my spirit is no longer viewed as common. My movement and my miraculous is no longer viewed as common because whenever you begin to view it as common, it is devalued and it is depreciated in your eyes and you no longer have reverence for it. And where there is no reverence, there is no revelation. Hmm. Where there is no worship, there is no wonder, and where there is no honor, you can never expect to receive anything miraculous. And God says it was supernatural, but it had become common. So God said, I'm going to shake it up. There was a man there that was waiting for 38 years for the troubling of the water. And every time he tried to get in it, somebody would take advantage of his slowness or his handicap and they would step in front of him. Pause for the cause. Ask your neighbor but do you know how that feels to be so close to something and then it gets snatched from you do, do you know how it feels to be close to it and then somebody steps in and takes what you believe should be yours but the good thing about God's mercy Bethesda house of mercy the good thing about his mercy is God says I look out for the people that have been stepped over 
I look out for the ones that people look over. Mm, look at somebody and tell them he looks out for the looked overs. Mm, and so the Bible says that Jesus comes and gives him a miracle right at the pool. God could have called him from the pool. God could have moved him. God could have taken him somewhere else. But God says, I'm going to do it right here because I'm trying to let you know that whenever I show up, it's not always in the way that you expected. So I'm going to give you a miracle at Bethesda a different way. And I'm here to tell you that God says, I'm getting ready to bless you in a supernatural way in a place where other people thought you could only get there by one means I'm going to do it you don't have to move pack your bags relocate God says I'm going to do it at a place where people thought is only one way it can be done and I'm going to show you that I'm coming another way somebody shout another way so brothers and sisters, we are in a particular season where we can no longer afford to become common with the supernatural. Every church is not experiencing the move of God in this way. Every people cannot trust their man and woman of God to be integral and to pray and to watch for their souls but we have gotten to a place where we feel that if God doesn't come a certain way then he is not moving it's because we have become common with his presence and we feel like it has to be predictable brothers and sisters if the pastor does not call you up in the line and personally prophesy to you every week you should be at the point and the place where you can receive the word of God as the spirit of prophecy but we have gotten to the place where brothers and sisters we have become prophetic crackheads and we want a personal word because we are so selfish and uh, the only time we say God is moved in a service is if he's moved on you brothers and sisters if my sister gets a word or if my brother gets a word I can attest to the fact that he's here even if I don't feel like I am blessed directly I am blessed indirectly because I've been in his presence ah oh, come down church we've got to grow to the place where it's not about us we have a adopted this mentality that the church is a hospital and that it is it is a hospital but I want to tell you that at some particular junction we must grow from the church being a hospital and you being a patient to you actually becoming a nurse and a doctor now if this church is a hospital if it's full of patients then who's getting healed if it's full of sick people then who somebody got to grow up and say I was in the bed but now let me check your temperature I was sick and afflicted now let me serve you medicine I was going through but at this point I'm a nurse now I graduated and God does not have to call me up every Sunday lay hands on me I roll on the floor I want God to do it for somebody else because I'm mature enough to know that if he blesses my neighbor it means he is in the neighborhood tell somebody it's a shift it's a shift it's a shift the pastor can't even talk to visitors because the members there has to be a shift we can't pray for other newcomers because every Sunday you got the same drama and the reality is you keep putting yourself in situations that yield manifestations of dramatic situations. And brothers and sisters, let me get to where I'm going unless I'm too long. Uh, I want to tell you that God, uh, God is causing the people of his to grow and develop in this shift. Someone say grow and develop. 
thank God. He's causing the people of his to grow and develop in this shift and recognize uh, their value and recognize uh, their strength and recognize their worth. And when you know your worth, you won't settle for a price. And so as you grow, as you develop, you will begin to recognize your worth and your value. And when you recognize your worth and your value, you won't settle for your price. For a price. Tell your neighbor, I know my worth. I know my worth. So I won't settle for a price. And brothers and sisters, a part of growth. And a part of recognizing worth and value is also being able to detox and detach. I wish I had a witness here. That's a part of growth. It's natural. That when you begin to grow, there's a detoxing that happens. And a detachment. And I'll be churchy because I'm subjective right now. Deliverance. And a part of that detachment and detoxing has to deal with a level of confrontation. I, I got two minutes to wrap this introduction up. Some things you have to confront. Some people you must confront. Because you will never conquer what you are afraid to confront. You will never overcome what you refuse to confront. You have to be able to confront some people and some things. But as the believer, you have to understand the dichotomy between carnal confrontation and godly confrontation. How does or how do saints confront? We ain't snapping no fingers. We ain't popping no necks. We ain't rude. We ain't nasty. We ain't raising up our voice. We ain't, we ain't, well, meet me outside. Meet me outside. You don't know me. You don't know. I'm not from Wendell. I'm from Raleigh. Okay. You, okay, you from Raleigh. We don't, that's not what we, we don't, we're not petty in our confrontation. We don't put subliminal posts on Facebook because we are in our feelings. We don't put subliminal messages out there and we don't begin to try to turn people against other people. That is carnal confrontation and that yields no results. Carnal confrontation gets reaction, but godly confrontation yields results that by the time I am finished with this confrontation and this conversation I need some results somebody got to see the error of their ways and make some changes but as long as you're in the flesh you'll only get fleshly results the scripture said in John 3 that which is flesh is flesh but that which is spirit is spirit so if you confront in the flesh you're going to get fleshly results But I promise you, godly confrontation will yield results. Because when the anointing of God comes on you, the anointing is a course corrector. It will begin to correct. I'm talking about the nastiest of persons that has the nastiest of attitude. When you confront them in a godly way and you are anointed, that nasty person has to come subject to the anointing. And that's why there's some conversations that I don't have until I feel anointed. And don't let nobody push you up and boost you up, child. You need to tell them. You need to get them. I'm waiting on the anointing to come because when I get anointed, I, it's like Samson. I can slay an army with the jawbone of a donkey. Yes, 
Some of your friends pushing you up. You need to get them, you need to set them straight. Some conversations you can only have with the anointing. Because if you go in there without the anointing, it's only going to be destructive. But when you pray and you feel the anointing of God and God gives you a strategy, because that anointing is going to make the difference. Because the anointing is going to pierce through all of that. That the reason why she's nasty is not just because she's rude. She's nasty because she's got rejection issues. The reason why he's nasty is not just because he's rude, but he's nasty because he's got daddy issues. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. And the anointing of God will get to the root of it. And then the fruit will be right. Scripture says that time the anointing of the spirit of God would come over Samson. He would shake himself. That's the anointing of God. Hallelujah. The spirit of God would come upon him and he would shake himself. You look at the life of Elijah. It wasn't until he got anointed that he stood before uh, Ahab yes, to confront him and said, it's, God said it's not going to rain until I say so. That took an anointing. You have to wait on the anointing of God so that you can, because all of us know how it feels to have to have hard conversations. Good God Almighty. But before you call your baby daddy, get an anointing. I wish I had a witness here. Before you talk to your supervisor with her nasty self, get an anointing. Before you have to deal with that spirit of Jezebel in the church, get an anointing. You have to deal with it, but make sure when you confront it, it's a godly confrontation. Godly confrontation yields results. Carnal confrontation gets reactions. Brothers and sisters, uh, uh, we've got to get to the place where we understand because we know that there's a shift and that shift is going to require growth. And a part of that growth is understanding value and worth. And then a part of that growth is also detaching and detoxing. Because in this season... As you grow and develop to the next place in God, in your life, the Holy Ghost says some things you tolerated in the last season, you will no longer be able to tolerate in the next season. So before you bring closure to your past, and your previous season, you've got to make sure that you confront some stuff so that you don't carry it over in your next season. Tell somebody, I'm not tolerating it anymore. I'm not. This is how you know you're growing and you're expanding stuff that you used to just tolerate. Now it aggravates. When toleration becomes aggravation, certain things that people did and used to do, you didn't, it didn't bother you. But now that you're growing, it's like it gets under your skin and it starts vexing your spirit. And this is this is discernment. This isn't no bias. This is you not you being religious, but you can recognize all this time that was a spirit and that spirit now has to be addressed because it will no longer be tolerated tell somebody it won't be tolerated mm. uh, Lord I got 12 minutes and I got to quit hallelujah mm -hmm. and I'm not preaching this hardcore just tear up everything gospel that's not what I'm here for tonight but I am telling you that God's getting ready to transition you there, there's some things that's getting ready to happen and don't think you strange or don't think it strange when stuff that you used to laugh at now aggravates you people that used to make you laugh 
death and you used to enjoy hanging around their company now all of a sudden you get vexed in your spirit it's because you're in a place and a season where it will no longer be tolerated come on now tell somebody it's no longer tolerated emotionalism and sensationalism it ain't that I'm it ain't that I'm at a place where I'm no longer compassionate but I'm at a place now where I don't have time to tolerate your attention seeking spirit come down church when you've gone through enough stuff and you've been in the middle of enough things and you survived enough you'll look at people and say now you mean to tell me you getting ready to backslide over that now let me tell you what all I've been through and I'm still holding on do I have any witnesses in the way church tonight that don't mind testifying to your neighbor and tell your neighbor I been to hell and back but I don't smell like smoke now you mean to tell me you getting ready to leave God cause your boyfriend broke up with you y'all ain't gonna help me pray I've been through a divorce I buried loved ones and I'm still holding on and you getting ready to quit God because your boyfriend broke your heart the devil is a liar I'm talking about tolerated you ain't showed up for two weeks because you said the pastor didn't speak to you I didn't see you there were 30 other people that I was shaking their hands and you said I didn't speak to you the devil is a liar you gotta get out of your emotions you wanna talk about you a prophetess you wanna talk about you a prophet and you deal with demons and you fight devils but you mean the tell me you let somebody roll their eyes at you uh, break your spirit I wish I had somebody in here that understand that it's not me being desensitized but brothers and sisters hallelujah it's not me being insensitive but my toleration level has shifted I recognize that you're just being emotional you just want attention you just want somebody to stroke your ego you just want somebody to pass a you but the devil is a liar in this season you're gonna have to grow and grow fast the Bible said that meat belongs to the mature and so this now becomes the problem in Revelation chapter number two concerning that church called Thyatara the problem is that God says by now you should have confronted the spirit of Jezebel in Thyatara but you all are sitting there tolerating this mm -hmm. and what you don't understand is what you tolerate you in turn validate uh, mm -hmm. and so he says you all are tolerating that uh, and why would you tolerate something uh, and validate something uh, that comes on an assignment to violate your atmosphere uh, you can validate what comes to violate uh, your spirit and violate your atmosphere atmosphere and so he says you all you all tolerate that spirit and nobody wants to be anointed enough to confront it the revelation revelation may I just take two minutes and then talk a little bit about this book of revelation now you all you all know revelation is one of those books that most people shy away from I have strength and weaknesses in my studies and I will be honest enough to admit that there's several strength in my study and my biblical prowess there's several strengths but one of my weaknesses is the apocalyptic 
topic. I've studied it. I enjoy it. But that's not one of my strengths. You know, you got to be honest with yourself. And when I teach it, I teach it. But then I generally bring in somebody else that has a stronger suit for that. But my life began to change when I began to see that the book of Revelation, though it is apocalyptic, it is also practical and prophetic. Uh, it ain't nothing for you to be afraid of or scared of don't want to read it uh, talking about this all of this all this that and the other you have to understand that the writer uh, who is referred to as John the Revelator we're not talking about the Baptist but we're talking about John the Revelator he has been sentenced on an island that is called Patamos uh, or Patamos he is in a time uh, of uh, uh, persecution the Roman government uh, is now persecuting uh, the saints left and right uh, brothers and sisters some were drugged through the streets with a horse until their limbs were torn to pieces Peter was uh, put on a cross but he said don't don't hit me right side up uh, flip me upside down because I don't want to be crucified like Jesus was so turn me upside down uh, they were beheaded and put in boiling oil and Nero would legitimately drop them in tar and then put them on a pole and light them on fire and eat his evening dinner with the light of a burning Christian I mean it was a tough time but somehow or another John uh, is not uh, killed or murdered. He is one of the only apostles to die a natural death. They said, we want to get rid of you, but we're going to put you on an island uh, and just let you die died there was no human there except John there were animals and raving beasts there but no humans and it's something that was in John that God says I'm going to cause to be preserved and it's called revelation and when you got something on the inside of you God will preserve you on an island the lions won't uh, tear you up the, come church the coyotes cannot uh, kill you the, the bears the wild beasts can't rip you apart God kept that man protected uh, and say so you're not going to die by the hands of an animal like they think you are uh, but you're going to die of natural causes uh, and John gets to writing isn't that something uh, he gets to writing and he is communicating with the church uh, and the revelation and these epistles uh, are given to the church now uh, these letters are going to churches uh, primarily that were founded by Paul and founded by Peter uh, and these men are long gone they have been martyred they have died you know Paul said I fought a good fight Finish. come on y'all know Paul is gone Peter is gone but John is standing as uh, the replacement and said I'm still going to keep y'all in cover where are the people that's willing to carry the torch and he's sending letters he's sending letters and he knows he knows that before the church gets the letters or the people in the church would get the letter these letters would have to be proofread by the emperor or his staff so he said let me mention things that only the saints would know let me talk the talk that only the people of God would understand mm -hmm. and so he's talking in symbolisms and uh, metaphors when he's talking about uh, the beast he's talking about Nero himself mm -hmm. when he's talking about uh, uh, seven heads and, and when he's talking about uh, waters of many waters he's pulling on the, these cultural new arms of knowing that the people of God would relate to the fact of crossing Red Seas and, and, uh, and Pharaoh's army being drowned. And so when he says the beast, 
Ghost was drowned in the sea. He's talking to people that know about Pharaoh's army being drowned. And while Nero is reading this, he thinks it's fiction. He thinks it's allegorical, but it's really technical. And he's telling them that y'all don't have to be afraid of Nero, this man who's persecuting the saints. He's a beast, but God's going to handle him like he handled Pharaoh. Hallelujah. And so he's filling it with uh, uh, metaphors that only the saints can understand. So that's uh, uh, throughout the whole book. You, you, get, you get all of these symbols and that's the exegesis of it. But uh, it is also apocalyptic and prophetic uh, because there is coming a time in the end time uh, where uh, there's going to be an antichrist that will be beast-like. Uh, and he's going to try to get the saints of God uh, mm, to take a mark hallelujah and compromise uh, hallelujah uh, uh, these things are literally coming and it's happening brothers and sisters before our very eyes uh, my God they're putting chips in the arms of people and uh, uh, you don't even have to use a key to start your car you won't need a key to open your door you just use computer chips and all of these things antichrist rising up and I don't believe uh, uh, in as much as I do believe that antichrist is a person but I do believe that antichrist is philosophy I believe antichrist is thoughts I believe that antichrist is uh, ideas and movements and I believe that antichrist is more than just a person this person will embody antichrist but all of these agendas and movements are things that will incubate antichrist amen well let me get to my text because my time is gone and so brothers and sisters upon this John is writing to these churches but he says I'm going to write these letters but I'm going to address them to the angel of the church and so by angel he's talking about the pastor and so chapter 2 is filled with churches we know the seven churches I don't have time but chapter 2 has Ephesus and you all know Ephesus the church of Ephesus and Smyrna and Pergamos and then Thyatira where we are tonight he opens up with a compliment he says let me talk to the angels of the church in Thyatar. Let me talk to the pastor. Let me talk to the person who has been appointed to lead this church. Because when the apostle or the apostolic anointing such as Paul and Timothy and Peter, when they would start a church, they would appoint a pastor there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's real apostolic uh, that's real uh, past, uh, uh, that's real apostle uh, you know oh God uh, amen uh, we have everybody longing for this title uh, we've got apostles here and apostles there but they have no work uh, mm -hmm. uh, they have no ability to establish they have no nothing the word in and of itself apostle means sent forth or sent out uh, brothers and sisters it's like a ship that's set to sail that goes into new territories and establish uh, territories and uh, goes to another place and that's what the word apostle means uh, hallelujah uh, not that you have a camera uh, all right uh, not that you have a camera uh, and a cash app uh, you know the only requirements for an apostle now uh, is cc uh, a camera and a cash app uh, y'all ain't gonna help me but they would send forth and they would leave pastors there hallelujah they would go and cultivate an area that's another lesson for another time cultivate an area and they would leave a pastor there and and so now the one of the only remaining ones is John and John is sending letters to them and said now the first thing is God told me to tell you that he compliments you you know you got to understand that even when you are in the time of godly confrontation 
<laughs> you should always pragmatically begin with a compliment. Don't just jump there correcting people and tearing it up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let me know what I've done good. <laughs> Amen. It's a simple process that we even teach in leadership at our church. <laughs> Amen. That if there's ever time you got to correct somebody, don't just go in there and say you sounded horrible. You look a mess. <laughs> oh child, you was just, you sounded like a dying cat. You got to at least compliment the fact I appreciate your diligence I appreciate the fact that you show up I appreciate uh, that you came to rehearsal uh, I appreciate the fact that you're willing uh, to be used by God I, I mean these are simple pragmatic things that are biblical uh, the Bible said that John opens up with a compliment and says to them uh, mm -hmm, I know your work you're charitable you got good service I love your faith I love the fact that you're patient uh, mm -hmm. I love your works uh, I appreciate the fact that you don't have uh, a clicks you put the last first uh, I appreciate the fact that you don't have picks and clicks uh, tell your neighbor I gotta quit but tell your neighbor I'm sick of the picks and the clicks uh, mm -hmm. if you don't have if you're not in this group uh, if you can't sing like this person uh, if you are not fashionable like this person you ain't in the in crowd pick and clicks he said I appreciate your works and your patience and your faith but then he goes in the correction he said not notwithstanding I got a few things I need to talk to you about or oh, come down church hallelujah pragmatically if you're going to godly confront you compliment but then you got to deal with correction he said notwithstanding I have a few things against you and the first thing that I have against you is you've been tolerating something called the spirit of Jezebel he says thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess Lord have mercy now y'all know my timer has gone off but can I borrow five minutes from the morning night is that alright can I borrow five minutes from the morning night <laughs> hallelujah uh -huh. she's calling herself a prophetess see we got this thing about Jezebel confusing now number one let me just clarify he's not talking about the actual person Jezebel she died 2,000 years prior but you see brothers and sisters the Jezebel is a spirit and when you chop off one head that spirit will transfer to somebody else ah, brothers and sisters they don't need you acting well, you don't need to preach this here we don't have no Jezebel here the devil is a liar every church that is prophetic has to contend with the spirit of Jezebel and when you get rid of one you will have to contend with another one I'll come down church if you are a prophetic house hallelujah there will always be that spirit of Jezebel that you will have to confront he says but that spirit of Jezebel disguises herself in the realm of a prophetic of all the gifts Lord I don't have the time Daniel but out of all the gifts why do you disguise yourself as a prophetess why do you cloak yourself in the prophecy because the spirit of prophecy and that prophetic spirit is one that is a magnet to people that are desperate or oh, a people uh, that are vulnerable uh, and so the quickest way you can turn somebody's heart uh, is through the prophetic uh, because people are open uh, because you are giving them uh, a prophetic word uh, that's why you have churches that start up uh, and all they want is prophecy uh, and you calling names and social security numbers and you coming out and all of this stuff you ain't living a nickel 
worth a dog meat. You ain't got no integrity. You don't care for nobody. You are selfish. You are draining people dry financially, but folk are flocking there because of that spirit of prophecy. And so, the way that Jezebel comes in and wins influence and set up a camp is through that spirit of prophecy. And that's why you got to watch that spirit that has picks and clicks that you got somebody in the corner trying to prophesy cornering them in the bathroom trying to you nasty number one don't prophesy to me in this nasty bathroom I, you wash your hands that's the first thing cornering them in the bathroom don't hallelujah in the parking lot you know I, I, you know, I had a dream about you why are you waiting until I get in the parking lot y'all ain't gonna help me preach why are you calling me at home telling me what and I'm not dismissing prophecy because there is authentic genuine the spirit of prophecy is in the house right now brothers and sisters but I'm telling you one thing about the spirit of God and authentic prophecy it is never out of order you ain't gonna prophesy defeat when the pastor is prophesying victory you're not going to come uh, talking about witches and warlock uh, when the pastor uh, is speaking a word of peace uh, and unity. Uh, you done took the whole service off. Uh, I come against every witch uh, and every what we ain't got. We ain't doing that right now. Uh, we're in a moment of praise and adoration. Why are you coming against witches and warlocks? because your spirit is completely off and so Jezebel that spirit of Jezebel it is a, it, you know you know in Hebrew it, it literally represents a python that's what it represents in Hebrew and you know the thing about a python most of us, most of us you know when we see a python we will be petrified we will run and scared you know but, but brothers and sisters think about this the, a python is quite interesting and this is why it is embodied in Jezebel because the spirit of Python it will wrap itself around you it will massage you before it murders you you don't hear what I'm saying if you did not know it was a snake and a python and it is wrapping itself around you it is massaging you come on church it is very relaxing but all the while it's just setting you up to suffocate you and that's what Jezebel does y'all think Jezebel is mean and nasty and ruthless not at all Jezebel is very massaging Mm -hmm. until you call her out I mean when you call that spirit out it'll flip you be like now where that came from now how, what, what in the world did that what? because it acts like it's the best thing for you that it loves you so much it's got your best interest in mind it'll try to give you money it'll try to buy you off y'all ain't gonna help me yes sir always acting like you're supporting everything come in Pat let me just slip something in your hand let me all of that and all of that's fine and dandy as long as your motive is right come on church hallelujah don't just say it with your mouth and your motive is off because that's manipulation when your mouth and your motives don't mix that is manipulation come on tell somebody that when your mouth and your motives don't match that's manipulation oh praise his name and the bible says to the pastor you tolerated that spirit of Jezebel long enough uh -huh. uh, that disguised herself as a prophetess and she teaches to seduce my servants to commit fornication oh brothers and sisters and to eat things that are sacrificed unto idols uh -huh. and God says let me correct you in that area because you've tolerated that now in no means am I saying 
to, to oversee her tonight. I'm not being subliminal. The only reason why God has given me this, I believe, to teach at this hour in this time. Because brothers and sisters, some of us have been tolerating foolishness and allowing the enemy to try and run rampant in our lives and homes. And God told me to remind you that you have dominion and authority. Oh, praise his name. Why don't you, if you don't mind, look over at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you have dominion and authority. Yes, and whatever the spirit may be, rather it be Jezebel, rather it be cancer, rather it be diabetes, rather it be rebellion in your children, and rather it be rebellion in a spouse. Whatever that spirit is, the Lord told me to tell you tonight that you have authority and you have dominion and you don't have to tolerate it any longer. Why don't you look over at your neighbor tonight and tell your neighbor these words. Tell them you have been in this place long enough. Uh huh, and tell them uh, your mountainside uh, has been rough. Uh, but look at them and tell them God says uh, that the struggle is over for you. Turn around and tell somebody else, uh, tell them the struggle is over. Uh, mm, uh, find that neighbor again and tell them you, 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 you don't have to tolerate it any longer. Do I have a window? Oh, you don't have to tolerate it any longer. He tells them that the Jezebel. Uh, mm -hmm, uh, is not to be tolerated uh, yes I gave her the space to repent uh, yeah I gave her the time uh, to turn from her wicked ways uh, and uh, you've been acting up in public uh, and there's some things you just have to address in public uh, ain't the Lord alright uh, and he tells them uh, you gotta get rid of uh, that spirit of Jezebel uh, let Jezebel know uh, that I know who you are and uh, you will not uh, have dominion in uh, my life uh, mm -hmm, uh, and I'm closing the night uh, when I tell you uh, that uh, that season is shifted uh, tell yourself tell yourself tell yourself it is a new season in my life I need you to preach to yourself as if you're talking to a neighbor and tell yourself say self you will no longer be intimidated to do what God has called you to do I said talk to yourself and say self you will no longer be afraid to obey God tell yourself self you're going to rise up in the authority that God has placed in you. Can the church say yeah? Come on and say yeah. Let me close and tell you one thing. He tells this church that, um, that he sees God and he's got eyes 
and eyes like fire. He's got eyes like flames, flames of fire, which means he can see right through you. Ain't the Lord all right? And I want to tell you that the God that we serve, he's not fooled by people's hallelujahs. He's not fooled by people's dancing. Oh, he's not fooled by people showing up the church. He said, I know your works. Ain't the Lord all right? He knows your works. And I want you to be encouraged that he tell that church that you tolerated Jezebel. But I'm getting ready to reward you. Because you're willing to confront it. Don't worry about losing Jezebel. Don't worry, oh Lord, about her being upset. And don't worry about losing her influence. He says, when she leaves, I'm going to reward you. I'm going to make it up to you. Ain't the Lord all right? He said, He that overcometh and keeps my works unto the end. He said to him, I will give power over nation. I want to tell you that you are an overcomer. Come on, drummer. You are an overcomer. Tell your neighbor you are an overcomer. Y'all ain't happy. Tell another neighbor you Tell them are you are you you are an overcomer I need you one more time and I'm gonna leave you alone find another neighbor find another neighbor and say neighbor neighbor tell them God told me to remind you you are an overcomer the devil can't kill you if he could have killed you he would have done it a long time ago but you overcame what other people thought you would have never made it out of you made it you made it you made it you made it where's the overcomer is there anybody that said I've been in a tussle I've been in a warfare I had to fight I had to warfare but I made it by the grace of God I survived live your hand live your hand and there I am I am an overcomer. I am. I am an overcomer. If nobody pats you on the back, if nobody tells you to go ahead, I'm here to tell you that God told me that you are an overcomer. Hold your head up, stick your chest out, let the devil know I will not be moved. This ain't the first time somebody rolled their eyes at me. This ain't the first time somebody tried to lie on me. This ain't the first time somebody tried to block me. And if he brought me through back then, he's going to bring me through now. I want to tell every Jezebel that you ain't the first one. And I made it out. I made it through. And I overcame. I will not be silent.
for us as the people of God to walk around with intimidation. That spirit will come and try to monopolize everything around you so that you could have to be solely dependent on that. But brothers and sisters, God told the church, you're an overcomer. There's power within you. At some point, you have to draw a demarcation line. I'm not going to tolerate it. I know what God has told me. And I know what God has said. Lift those hands. I've held you all entirely <laughs> too long. And uh, I want you to pull on the strength of the Lord. Haniel Shaya. Pull on the strength of the Lord. And for the next 30 seconds, I want you to ask God to strengthen you for the shift. Come on, ask him, strengthen me for the shift. I'm the old shy. Come on, ask him, strengthen me for the shift. However I have to detox and whoever I have to detach from. God's going to do a few things for you tonight. Firstly, he's going to touch your body. Usko by Messiah. Going to touch your body. He's going to give a fresh anointing to your hands for acquisition and business and expansion. And he's going to settle every family matter. Every family matter. God says, I'm going to settle everything. You can't save everybody in your family. You can't fix everybody in your family. They will put weight on you and pressure on you. God said you release it, give it to him, and you're going to see him work the miraculous like never before. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, lay your hands afresh and anew on this man of God. 
higher hope bondable shata his body every part from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet straight and heal heal I come out post shot we come against stress we come against stress stress in the workplace and stress surrounding him thank you that you give him a fresh anointing thank you for business expansion work thank you for deliverance coming through his whole household his whole family oh my 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 oh jesus oh Woo, thank you for sealing under those Woo, thank you for sealing it right now. You didn't make a mistake when you stepped out. Hallelujah. Hiya. God said you didn't make a mistake. Hiya. He's going to back you up. Woo. Hey, ha, ha, ha. That's it. Hey, ha, 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 ha. Hey, ha, 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 ha. He's going to back you up. He's not going to miss a beat. Hey, hiya. Woo. Hiya, you not gonna miss a beat. Heal, Lord. Come on, shut over them your mouth and give them glory. Hands on your heart and say, Heal the heart. Oh, uh, heal the heart. Come on, no, 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 see ya. Heal the heart. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Heal the heart. Right here and right now. Heal the heart. Heal the heart. Lord, I can't lay hands on all of you, but some of you went through some rough seasons, and you overcame, and you you survived it, but it left some scars on your heart. Heal the heart. Come down, church. Heal the heart. Come on, from the last season. Tell your name from the last season. Heal the heart. Oh, heal the heart. Come on, from that last season that you've been through. Heal the heart. Oh, heal the heart. Come on, somebody get the breakthrough right there. Get on my son now. Come on, from that last season. It was embarrassing. I want that shot. Come on, it was embarrassing. That breakup came to cause you to break down. Get on my bubble, shot ya. You thought you'd be married by now, but it didn't go that way. It came to embarrass you and break you down. Come on, that last battle, I'll show you. you trusted somebody. You gave them a position, and they walked out of the ministry. But heal the heart. Heal the heart. I'll show you. Heal the heart. Heal the heart. I need you to take three steps right now and say I'm healed and whole in Jesus' name. Come on, now, now, now. There's an influx of young people that's coming to us. I see it coming down the road. Whoa. 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 Whoa.
God says he's going to do it. He's going to do it because there are some people that wanted this church to die. Not, not, not just you. You know what I'm saying? Not, not about you. But wanted the church to die. And they thought that they had it set where them leaving or them going was going to have it so set where you would never be able to bounce back. But my God, I, I heard in my spirit, Jeremiah, I can't remember the chapter, but he said, when I pass thee, and I saw you laying in your own blood, he said, I said, live! And that's what God said. I told Rachel, you gonna live. Not only are you gonna live, but I'm sending fresh life, fresh blood. Come on, a new generation. A new generation of praises. A new generation of worshipers. Oh. And I want you to look at your neighbor. Tell him when God say live, you have no other choice but to live. Even when I wanted to move, I still have to stay here for God's sake. He said, You have to a great pastor. Multiple locations. Multiple locations. Multiple locations. But one of the locations is an already established location. It's going to be a work that's going to be handed to you. Because when God sent him, you will live. Y'all ain't happy about it. I said multiple locations. One of the locations is going to be handed to him. It's a familiar place. I hear the Holy Ghost say it's a familiar place, but I'm gonna do something new in a familiar place. Oh, oh, oh no. I want you to put your hands on the seat tonight. We've exhausted tonight. We've exhausted your time and other. Amen. And I want you to put your hands on the seat tonight. I need you to trust the Lord with a seat of 30. I, I keep hearing that in my spirit, the number 30. And uh, I want you to put your hands on that seed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to God. Anybody know it won't always be like this? God will perfect. Hallelujah. Everything I need is in God. I have no need to fear. All I need hmm. provision. Pastor, provision. Provision. Pastor, lady, provision. Banda, makoshi, anda basia. Ooh, she, na, 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 see. Ay, 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 ay. Provision is already done. Provision. Pastor, I want you just to walk with me. Come on, just walk with me. Walk right around here. Come back. Provision. Yeah, no, no. It's shot. Glory. Come on. Come on, come on. Let's go this way. Ta na 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 sha. I'll walk through here. Provision. Kaya. Because I got to tell you something. Oh, no, 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 shit. Hey, I am not I got to tell you something. Holy Ghost said that provision for the building that you that you want, that not only you want, 
but for the place that has been promised by God. God promised it to you. It's just that there's some Jebusites and Hittites that may be occupying it right now. But the Holy Ghost told me to tell you that the provision for that place is yours. He said, it's yours. Somebody's occupying it, but it's yours. And tell somebody next year, we're going to walk into our faith. That's why Pastor had to walk. That's why he had to walk around. I'm telling you, what I hear the Lord say, you're going to walk into your... said God said you've been faithful you have been faithful Hallelujah. you kept you kept quiet you didn't go to court you didn't do none of that stuff you didn't try to drop no papers you didn't try to do nothing God said you've been faithful now I'm gonna reward you I feel a dance
breakdowns in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed already and highly favored in Jesus' name. 